I'm your host, Marsha Florence, with Just Ask Podcast Live. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. You know how I am about when I see everybody tuning in for a Thursday special. It's basically because the resources that we have are fresh in our minds, so we want to be able to share the wealth of information with you. Now, I, I like having returning guests for a reason, ladies and gentlemen, because when these people come back to see us again, they have some information that has, is, is new to us to share with you so that you can be abreast of what's going on in your city, your state, okay? So either way it goes. Now, this gentleman here, always, always when he comes to join us, it is a pleasure because why? He gives us enough resources that we can actually be prepared when we're making some of these uh, transitions for housing, for health care, for legal matters all together, okay? So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my guest today, the one and only Attorney Jim Schuster. Good afternoon, Jim Schuster. Good afternoon, Marcia. So good to be with you again. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Jim, I had to give you that introduction because you know, most people don't know when you come, it's, it's got something good, okay? <laughs> it's, it's resources that the community doesn't know about, and we just always appreciate you being there. Well, thank you. And we do have a subject like that today, so, yes. something people want to know about and they don't know about. Yes, yes. Now, you know, Jim, uh, before we go into the subject, it's it's like this one in particular is going to be a while before it unfolds. So the people need to be prepared to know what to do, contact their their con- congressmen, their city officials or whatever to get this ball rolling. Because a lot of things, I know this is a bill. So this is bill, what's this bill? House Bill 6698. Uh, what's this? Uh, the Medicaid Estate Recovery that's the bill that we're discussing today. That's right. And this bill is in the uh, Congress, the federal Congress. It's not in the Michigan House or the state houses. So that's what we're talking about. Okay. Okay. And I want to give people a chance to see uh, the cover, the cover sheet of this story. So Medicaid is state claims. Okay. And so people are not really comfortable with knowing what this means. And Today, I know you get a chance to tell us exactly what it means for um, people in general and uh, what we say, Michiganders. And that's right. It's a it's nationwide story and has Michigan, uh, if you will, twist to it as well. Okay. Okay. So let's get started, Jim. So I, I started off with the question, Medicaid forces families to sell homes and give the money to the government. What does that actually mean? Okay, let's uh, first sort of get the context, paint the picture, and let's use a sort of a hypothetical dad. Now, let's say that uh, mom and dad have been married, say, 65 years, and mom has been taking care of daddy as Alzheimer's, and he just gets to the point where she can't take care of him anymore. Now, then they're mid-80s, upper 80s, and he has to go into a nursing home. Well, nursing homes, uh, as many people know, are very expensive. Matter of fact, the Michigan average, state average, whole state, is over $9,500 a month. In the Wayne County area, you can pay $12,000 a month. Hugely expensive. So let's say this mom and dad couple, they run, uh, they're running out of money, and they apply to Medicaid to pay for the nursing home bill. Okay, so Medicaid does... And it first requires make sure that they spent almost all of their money down. They'll allow mom to have half of their savings. Uh, The other half has to be absolutely spent at the nursing home. And then they apply. After dad passes away in the nursing home, Medicaid will send a notice to mom saying, oh, by the way, you've got to pay us back for every dime and every dollar we paid for taking care of your husband. But we'll wait until you pass away, and then your family will have to come up with the money. It'll be hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe. And they'll have to sell the family home so we can get our money back. Mm. That's a short picture of Medicaid estate recovery. It means they want every penny they paid out back through the estate. It means after a person dies, and recovery means we get their money. Now, Mm Marsha, I think that anybody listening and say wait a minute that sounds so strange uh, and when you think about it i don't know of any other government program you name it whether it's police fire protection whether it's education or whether it's mm-hmm. medicare that says oh after you die you got to pay us every a penny back that we paid out for you 
This is the only program that does it. Okay. No, but, but but people don't know this. So, I mean, is it something that, that the families are signing and they don't know what they're signing? Or is this in the well, during the conversation of the, the, of the um, transition of a person or something? It is in the Medicaid application and one of the many paragraphs on the uh, application. Uh, I would say to you that many people know about it. I can't, I've never done a survey to see what percentage of people know about it. Here's part of the problem. I'm a lawyer and it's true, just like anything else, if you have the money to hire a lawyer, then you can avoid a lot of these problems, okay? Mm -hmm. In Michigan, a state recovery, I'll just give you the short nut. In Michigan, the state recovery can be avoided if all your property avoids probate, okay? And also you have range to qualify for Medicaid too. That pretty much means the family has to hire a lawyer. But if the folks don't have enough money to hire a lawyer, then what happened, you know, I would, I've worked with a few, many Detroit residents, they don't have the money to hire a lawyer. Then they find out at the end, uh, the state of Michigan says, oh no, you got to sell that house that your parents own that we want our money back. So it comes as a rude surprise to the children to find they have to sell the house, the family home to pay the state back. But what happens, Jim, if the family home is already um, divvied to the children and the parents are, you know, of elderly nature, true enough, and they're going into a assistant, or not assistant, but going into a nursing home. If the house is already reassigned uh, to one of the children or whatever, can the state go back on to them? Can the nursing home facility go back on to the, to the child? Right now, right now in Michigan, the answer is no, and that could change. Right now, the answer is that the state of Michigan will only make this deep formal legal demand if the house goes through probate, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. Now, in other states, and the, by the way, the federal, the national Medicaid law allows the state to place a lien on a home, and other states are more aggressive than that. They'll say, we will lien the home, and any way you try to transfer it, we're going to get it back. The transfer will be void. So Michigan's a little lenient as compared to other states who will really go through any length to get all their money back. Okay. All right. So that sounds a little no. rough on, you know, people are not really. So in other words, you, you read the forms, you have to read the fine print of the forms to oh. see that piece right there. Okay. Oh. I mean, because, you know, oh. this to me plays on people's emotions. You know, your loved one is, is, is ill and that's a lot of pressure. You know, you're at a point where you can't take care of them any longer by yourself. So you find a facility that you think is... Um, you know, capable of have taken care of the person for you and give you that that moment to get yourself together financially and know that you're going to be paying monies towards this this care. But now, when you said when you read about this, it's like it's no longer about the care. It's about at the end, where does the money come from? That's yeah, that's right. Okay, that's right. all right. That's 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 kind of it. Sounds kind of cruel. It is very cruel. It's also an insult to any hardworking person who paid the mortgage off, maintained the home, built up a little nest egg, and the state says, oh, you had Alzheimer's. Well, too bad for you. We want the home. We're going to take it. You know, uh, It is very cruel, and it's very wrong. Now, Marsha, I'll just sort of mention again that there's a bill in Congress, this 6698 that mm -hmm. we've identified, that is getting very little attention. And that bill would allow the states to stop Medicaid estate recovery, stop it entirely. Okay, and then Medicaid would be just like every other government program you can imagine, every other one, the roads, the highways, the fire, the education, Medicare, none of them ask for money back. So at this point, what should the, the, the public do? I mean, you, you said it's okay. a house bill. Is it is it on the table now for discussion, or is it coming down the pipes? What, what oh, yes, do? it is. I suggest, uh, okay, let me just say a couple things, Marsha, to try to make this a complete answer. One, until a bill is passed, if you have a relative, brother, sister, mother, father, going to a nurse home, it's going to be long-term care, and you know they're gonna run out of money because nobody has enough money to pay a nursing home very long, you have to talk to an elder law attorney and say, we gotta save the house, we gotta save what we can. 
Okay, that's if this that's right now why this bill has not passed. Once it passes, then we can presume that the states will no longer engage in this heinous practice. Okay, so what to do right now? Call up your Congress congressional representative and say, I want you to vote for this House Bill 6698. Okay, I want you to end Medicaid taking people's homes from them. I want that stopped right now. That's what people can do. Okay. okay. And now, okay. So I'm you hoping, might say, I'm sorry, Jim. I was going to say, I'm hoping people are listening today because, like I said, you know, this is new to me as well. So I think that, you know, we have to be able to show people that there is a, 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 a situation here that needs to be addressed. And, uh, you know, go through Congress uh, on your local. Is, can the senators do anything? Is anyone in our local areas that we will approach? Uh, no, it's uh, it is the con- House members. OK, like uh, I'll just name a couple names. I don't claim to memorize them all. Uh, Debbie Dingell is a co-sponsor. Well, that's for the folks downriver. Uh, Brenda Lawrence represents the western uh, part of uh, Detroit. Uh, she is not signed on as a co-sponsor. Um, Rashida Tlaib has not signed on as a co-sponsor. I think Haley Stevens is another representative in the metro area. She has not signed on as a co-sponsor. So you might say call them up, their offices up and say, why haven't you co-sponsored this? This is wrong. Get rid of it. Okay. Now, you might say, somebody might say, well, wait a minute, why is there this thing in the first place? It sounds so crazy that, you know, the government wants money back and you got to sell the house to pay them back. And even then you may not have enough to pay them back. Uh, who dreamed up this strange right. idea? That, that is a good question, Jim. So let me, of course, phone always rings the wrong time. So let me just, just give you the idea of what happened? Where did this come from? Okay. Originally, it came, uh, Medicaid was formed in 1965, and it kind of carried that old concept of give a, a person a hand up, not a hand out. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's part of the origin. The other part of the origin that uh, in 1993, they made it mandatory the states had to do this. And there are two reasons. Uh, one reason was that they wanted to sell long term care insurance. Right. The insurance industry thought they could make a buck on this thing. So that was one of the motives. By the way, that reason failed. 1993, that that mandatory requirement was passed. By 2010, almost all insurance companies stopped selling long-term care insurance because it just wasn't worth the money. It wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth the money to the insurance company. Uh, they were losing money on it. Right. People could not pay enough money to afford what they wanted anymore. Okay? Mm-hmm. All right. The second reason was that it's supposed to put pay back Medicaid. It's supposed to put money back and sort of help fund the program. Okay. Which is kind of strange when you think about how many programs do we know that are funded by people's homes instead of just taxes. But the idea was it's supposed to help fund the program. There have been multiple studies since then showing that the program does not fund the program. It returns, if you're ready for this, only half a percent. Half of 1%, that's all a part of the Medicaid budget they get back this way, okay? Mm-hmm. Half of 1%. In other words, this program, this Medicaid estate recovery doesn't work, doesn't meet its goals. It just doesn't work. It's it seems like there's a lot of uh, loopholes here. So, like, for instance, Jim, one of the questions I had for you was uh, Medicare does not seek payback for expensive uh, hospital procedures. Now, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm surprised to, to see that. So, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking when you're in the hospital, if you've got Medicare coverage, that's who's be, being billed. How does this how does this go about? Yeah, well, once again, Marsh, there is a, di- I'll just, okay, a disease discrimination. Mm-hmm. Somebody, let's say, has destroyed their kidney or their liver through drinking hard, hard liquor all of his life. That was a new King Rich uh, quote. Um, Medicare will give them any surgery they need to replace the kidney, you know, do liver damage. If uh, cardiac surgery, uh, Medicare will pay for it. Okay. They won't, it'll cost over $100,000 for those surgeries. They want to ask for a penny back, all right? 
-hmm. Now, however, if you have Alzheimer's, well, there is no hospital procedure for Alzheimer's, so you have to go to a nursing home. Well, then, just because you have Alzheimer's, now you're going to lose the home because you have the wrong disease, okay? So Medicare is a medical insurance, and they don't ask for money back. You well, might say, well, what is Medicaid? It's a, this is a little scary, and, you know, I mean, I'm one of the baby boomers and we're heading in that direction, so it kind of makes me wonder sometime, am I knowledgeable yeah. enough to be prepared for the future for changes that, you know, we have to make? So, Jim, answer this if you can for me. It says Medicare will pay only for full care in a nursing home. All right. Now, Medicare is basically Part A is conceived as hospital insurance, and the nursing home component of that is post-hospital rehab or post-hospital nursing, skilled nursing. So let's say somebody has a major surgery and they have to, you know, have to have follow-up by nurses 24 hours around the clock. That's what they call skilled nursing. And the other part of Medicare post, pardon me, post-hospital Medicare is rehab. Mm. Now, I think we all know somebody's broken a hip and had to have rehab in a skilled nursing facility. Well, Medicare's maximum coverage benefit is 100 days. And once again, it's not just for the general nursing home, it's for those post-hospital procedures needed in a non-hospital setting that is a nursing home. So okay. Medicare doesn't have a long-term care component. Okay. <laughs> Wow, it's a lot. This is a lot to uh, absorb under these rules. Yeah. So no, you're right. Now, if okay, so long-term care, long-term care Medicaid recipients are taxpayers. Right. Is that is that well, no? I mean, a, there, there's a group that don't pay. Well, well, I'll put it this way: when we're talking about losing a home, that means somebody has worked all their life put aside enough money, paid off a mortgage, have a home. These people are by definition taxpayers. Now the average age of the nursing home resident is about 85 years old. So when you put some numbers together, you can see this person has been a taxpayer for at least 65 years. And mm -hmm. the fact that they have a home, they're still a taxpayer. Now many of the older generation, folks 85 years old, have served our country, whether it be the Korean conflict, whether it be Vietnam, veterans too. They have paid their, they have paid a lot to the country in those 65 years, I'll tell you. Wow. <laughs> Education yeah, 101 today. Yeah. All right, all right, but so, you know, go ahead, Jim. No, I would just say that I've, you know, I talk to people and every now and then uh, somebody will say, oh, you mean the taxpayers gotta pay their bills? You're thinking, what? What makes you think that the taxpayers don't pay their bills if they receive Medicare service? Or the taxpayers don't pay their bills if they have a fire at the home and the fire department mm -hmm. comes out? I mean, and also the fact these people are taxpayers for 65 years, you're going, what kind of, you know, that's, that's crazy talk. It doesn't make any sense to me. I understand. I understand. I, I just think that, like like I said before, if we don't know something, that's why we should just ask. But if we, we don't know something, this is the time to bring it to the forefront so that you can be prepared or you can, like you said, you know, contact your congressman to, to say, hey, do you support this bill or not? You know, because right. we're in, we're between the crossroads of uh what was what's to come in the next future in the next generation which is us to me and i'm like yeah. okay if i know something early on then i can be more prepared to know what to look for if i don't know i might sign the wrong thing or you know the family says well this was the family home now it's gone because you know the person has to be taken care of and we're not expecting that so jim if if the family home has to be divvied up what if a person doesn't have a family home what are we what are this what is the system putting in place you know like this person's living beyond the the monies that they have available so what what uh, ideas do they have set in, set in stone well i'm not quite following that marsha medicaid estate recovery means that the, when the person dies they have something left, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Medicaid 
it's a program. Like I said, uh, before you can apply for Medicaid, you have basically had to spend just about all your life savings at the nursing home, okay? That's what they call the spin down. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's what they call a spend down. Now, a state recovery means they had something like, what does Medicaid allow a person to maintain a home, all the contents? They do allow a, a car, an automobile. Maybe it's a sport youth. They do allow mm-hmm. that. So whatever property that could be sold you have when you pass away, Medicaid says sell it and we want our money. Uh, if somebody has nothing at all, let's say we have a poor little old gentleman who lives in a, a senior apartments, only has like, you know, $5,000 in savings and uh, he has no home, no car, nothing. Well, he doesn't have to worry about a Medicaid estate recovery. He has nothing, nothing, right. nothing. Wow. Yeah. So Jim, now, let me just, yeah, go ahead. go ahead, please. No, go ahead. Well, I was, I was just going to compare this to the way the rich are treated. Now, some people say, oh, there you go, pulling out the old rich uh, card again, eh? Well, watch this. It's okay. Um, <laughs> watch this. Uh, what people would never know about, because who would think about it, is there's this thing called inheritance tax. Now, remember, a lot of the critics uh, would say, well, why should the children get an inheritance after all? You know, let them go work for it. Uh, we got to pay our bills and all that. Okay, there's an inheritance estate tax for the rich people, but they get a $12 million exemption per person, okay? So if uh, if I'm a multimillionaire and I'm worth only 10 million, I'll never pay inheritance tax and all of that money can go to my children. They'll get their inheritance with no tax, okay? Mm-hmm. Well, what was the argument? It used to be only 650,000 back in the 90s. That's like 25 years ago. How did it get from 650,000 to over 12 million? Well, one of the arguments that the proponents use was, well, a lot of these people are family farms and a lot of them are small businesses. Mm-hmm. And if you have this tax here, they're gonna have to sell the family farm and have to sell the small business. And they <laughs> need the capital, they need the money. You right. go, Wait a minute. So working families have to sell their home, but millionaire farmers don't have to sell the family farm or even take a mortgage out on part of it. I mean, you say, what? That, that's just not only unfair, that's just wrong. Now, here's another little point that this is unrelated, but I think uh, you being a very informed woman heard this. The 21st century workforce has to be ec- educated workforce. Matter of fact, the Chamber of Commerce had a study came out a few years ago saying that post-secondary education will be necessary for the United States to compete in the 21st century with China and all the other countries. Well, what does it take for a working mom to have post-secondary education go to community college? She needs two things, time, money, okay? And if you got the money, you, you can make the time. So. Here we come to the exact same situation where working families need their inheritance so they can stay productive and the United States can have a skilled workforce that needs to complete and they compete in the global economy. Now, some people say, boy, that's kind of a strange, but what well, I'm saying is if you compare the tax laws for the rich with the Medicaid tax or estate recovery for the working folks, I think you can see there's something wrong here. Okay. Most definitely. Otherwise, let the rich folks uh, sell or mortgage the farm to pay their taxes then too. Well, that's, that's the why they have. Still that's probably why they have a legal team, so they don't. <laughs> they don't go through that. Okay. This yeah. this sounds like a, it'll miss the rich folks. Okay. All right. Well, Jim. So at this point in time, I mean, we have so many questions to ask, and I know we don't have a lot of time to go over. I have one more question I wanted to ask you. Um, said Medicare. I said Medicaid could save forty three percent if it paid for custodial care in an assisted living facility. Yeah, now here's like a curious contradiction with Medicaid. A lot of people, you know, who once again, you know, working families have some savings, will have, let's say, dad in an assisted living facility. You know, he can't be, mom can't take care of my home, so they put him in an assisted living facility, has his own apartment, et cetera. When they start running out of money for that assisted living facility and they got to look for a nursing home, okay? Medicaid will pay in the nursing home where he will get essentially the same care that he got in the assisted living. 
because if, if you know anything about people with Alzheimer's, way too often they have a very healthy body, but their mind is, you know, sick, okay, diseased. So the, he's going to get the same care in the nursing home that he got in the assisted living. When you, any person say, well, Medicaid, uh, wouldn't you save money paying for money in assisted living in the nursing home? Here's the point. Genworth is a national organization, national firm that conducts cost of uh, living for various categories. Nine, this year, the current cost for a nursing home annual, annual cost $95,000. For assisted living, annual cost $54,000. Then if you apply this to Medicaid, you say, wait a minute, Medicaid's paying the nursing home something like $94,000. $95,000, but they could save $40,000 by paying for care and assisted living. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, getting the same care, by the way. You know, we're not saying this gentleman has a surgery or pneumonia. We're just saying he needs Alzheimer's care or memory care. And by the way, I didn't tell you that almost half the nursing home residents are there because of dementia. Okay. He's getting the same care he would have gotten in nursing uh, assisted living $40,000 cheaper. Well, Jim, I'm, you know what? We're running out of time, and you're always, always welcome to come back because, you know, you have to enlighten us with some more resources. I mean, it doesn't just stop here. We're going to ask our viewers to please consider writing to their Congress about this matter and uh, keep this in mind. Will you come back and join us again? Absolutely, Marsha, anytime. Thank you, Jim. So stay right there. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I, I don't like to rush, but, you know, we only have half an hour. Maybe you can help us get, get increased into an hour. But in the meantime, take in consideration the shows that you see, especially the resources about uh, the cost of living, health care, and all those things. I'm your host, Marsha Florence with Just Ask, and what do I always say if you know a person with a disability or if you just have a general question, don't be afraid to ask Just Ask. I'm your host. Well, see you next time.